welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside more guides before tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out, all their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today, at the request of Patreon subscriber Ryan, I was asked to brew around the card Pain's Reward. This is a weirdo from Saviors of Kamigawa, one of the worst sets ever printed. And this card is no exception. Two and a black, sorcery. Each player may bid life. You start the bidding with a bid of any number. In turn order, each player may top the high bid. The bidding ends if the high bid stands. The high bidder loses life equal to their bid and draws four cards. Three mana draw four is insanely powerful. However, your opponent can get in on the action here too if they have more life than you or they're willing to spend more life than you. How do we build around this card? The short answer is make sure that you have more life than your opponent or that they can't use those cards against you if they're willing to take a bunch of damage to get them. And here we have a black stompy shell. Ryan originally proposed kind of a blue-black shell with Hall Breacher on top of everything else, but I actually think going mono-black adds a lot of stability to the shell that the extra blue cards don't make up for with their power level. But first of all, let's punish draws. We've got four Orcish Bowmaster, four Shouldred, and one Fate Unraveler, Enchantment Creature Dash Hag. This hag is ready to party. This is a 3-4 creature with the text of Underworld Dreams on it. I considered putting actual Underworld Dreams in the deck, but my Ancient Tomb deck with a black, black, black enchantment, I didn't really want to mess around with that. I actually think three and a black is easier to cast than black, 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 even though it's more, because the Ancient Tombs are in the deck. So I got nine ways to make them lose life, deal damage, etc. if they draw cards. Then they're less incentivized to bid against me, and if they do win the bid, they take extra damage on top of whatever their bid is. My creatures light them up on the way through as well. The other thing we could do is make sure you have more life than them so you can just bid better. Exsanguinator Cavalry, 2-3 Menace Lifelink for 2 and a black. Again, that's an important mana cost in this Ancient Tomb deck. Whenever a knight you control deals combat damage to a player, put a plus one counter on that creature and create a blood token. Blood tokens create extra selection in your mono black deck. A blood token, for those of you who didn't draft Crimson Vow, is one tap, discard a card, sacrifices artifact, draw a card. More importantly, though, Exsanguinator Cavalry. It has evasion in menace, and it has lifelink. You're bashing, and this creature's getting bigger. And it says whenever a knight you control deals damage, put a plus one counter on it. This is a knight, and they see each other. If you have two of these and hit with one of them, two plus one counters on it. It gets pretty big pretty fast. You could just solo a game with like this back by Trinisphere, get kind of a Goblin Rabble Master effect going. But if you're hitting your opponent for three, four, five a turn with lifelink, they're not going to win a bidding war on life points against Pain's Reward, and then you're just four cards up on them. And then, of course, the Black Wheel of Fortune Dark Deal. Each opponent discards their hand, then draws that many cards minus one. This is a force to draw in the deck. Whether you like it or not, your hand's gone. You have one fewer card, and you're going to trigger my Bowmasters, my Shouldreds, and my Fade Unraveler. That's also why Concealing Curtains is in the deck. This transforms for, you guessed it, two and a black. And then opponent reveals their hand. You may choose an all-man card from it, have them discard it, and then they draw a card. That's a force draw and a slight disruption. Baleful Mastery, 4 mana, Exile Target Creature, Planeswalker. You can pay 2 instead of 4, but if you do, an opponent draws a card. Surprise, make them draw a card. All this tucked into Ancient Tomb, Chrome Mox, Dark Ritual, Mana Base, and we're just going to try to jam some stuff down their throat real fast and be annoying about drawing cards. That's the plan. Let's do it. This is Pain's Reward. I'm on the draw and run 1. I have Concealing Curtains, and then I can activate it turn 2 or jam Cavalry. I'm not doing much on turn 1, but I do like the way this hand is. Set to unfold. Underground C. Thought C's. Okay. Probably going to lose my curtains here, would be my guess. This looks like Doomsday to me. I guess it could be Scam, which would take Cavalry. They did mold a six, and then Underground C Thought sees me. They did take the curtains. I'm feeling like this is Doomsday then, if that's what they're worried about. 
Cool trick, though, is if you Baleful Mastery at Thassa's Oracle, they have to draw a card. Which is bad news if their deck is empty. Okay, I think I want to lead on Cavalry here. Either card would get dazed, and I think Voidwalker is probably actually more important to stick around for a while. Brainstorm in the end step. If I was 100% sure this was Scam, I might lead on Voidwalker. Because that shuts off a lot of their deck. But they had mana up this turn. If they were going to cycle a troll, then reanimate it, they could still just do that with Voidwalker on the stack. Or cycle the troll and then reanimate on their own turn. Ooh, or Grixis something or other. And they didn't bolt me. Okay. Is this just Grixis control? Nope, 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 nope. It's not. Are we Storm? What is, what is going on here? Maybe I should have played Voidwalker. Pedal, Pedal, Ponder. I guess all these cards are in the Epic Storm. Is this just Epic Storm? They could have a pretty big Galvanic Relay here, I guess. They did not shuffle. They dumped out the pedals, though, before the Ponder. They clearly had something they wanted to do here. Dark Ritual. Okay. Yeah, if I lose to Beseech here, it's my own fault for not playing the Voidwalker. It just had bad information. Or incomplete information. Bummer. All right. Yeah, this was avoidable. Ugh. All right. Yep. I deserve that. Next game. Now my sideboard comes in. We've got Null Rods, Tarox. Lake Engineer can mop up if they have to go into Empty the Warrens. Powder Keg can do that too, but Plague Engineer attacks and blocks at other times. And now I know what I'm playing against, so I can just mulligan better and play Voidwalker. I have to cut one more card. I like everything that gives me speed. I like everything that is disruptive. I'm looking at Fate, Unraveler, Dark Deal, Exsanguinator, Cavalry as the things I might cut. And I think it's actually a Cavalry. Get in here, other cards. Oh wait, that's still 61. Oh no, I submitted 61. Miscounted somewhere. Uh, key. Turn one Trinisphere. As they say, we ball. I do have the option, because I do only have two lands here. I have the option of thought seizing them now, and then playing Concealing Curtains plus ball next turn. I'm just going to ball. Hopefully this is just insanely difficult to overcome for them. If I find land three, I feel fine. If I don't, I'll be worried. Misty Rainforest. Pass. Easy. Had it. Always had it. I'm going to play Agadim tapped. Save my life total when it doesn't really matter. Moment of truth. Does their hand even have a second mana source in it? They are fetching the first one. Weird. Why do that? Don't you want more lands in your deck? Yeah, I'm not sure what that's about. I'm going to Thought Seize. So they can't cast spells. I could get Concealing Curtains in now and then Children in. I'd rather get a look at their hand and then jam Children next turn. Drawing land four. I think I play Curtains if I didn't draw land four, but I did. Yeah, they're not really close to functioning here. And Echoing Truth is their app out to the Trinisphere. I'll take that. And they miss their land drop again. Oh, that's so much cooler. All right. Tarak Con Queso. Let's mess that hand up. I'm not even sure if that is better than children. I just got excited about it. All right, cool. Turn one three ball carried the day, as it tends to do. Now we got to win a game on the draw. I don't like Leyland of the Void enough. This deck can turn one you, and they need the graveyard to do it. But they're not very good at doing that. I guess in a deck that can get to four mana and I have Chrome Moxes, drawing a Leyland after turn zero isn't even like the worst worst. I don't like it, though. I'd have to start cutting spells for that. And I like spells. Didn't even cut the one extra spell that I forgot I had until I clicked OK. This hand's super slow. I'm going to mulligan this. I will keep this and bottom Plague Engineer. This isn't exactly blazing, but I'm doing something on one, and I'm doing something extremely powerful on two. Might be too slow, but I'm hoping for the best. I'm on the draw against a Thoughtseize deck. I don't want to, like, mold a four, and then they Thoughtseize my Dark Ritual, and then I'm stuck with just, like, a Swamp and a Dredisphere in my hand. No thanks. And this hand just goes nuts if I draw a Ancient Tomb, Dark Ritual, or Chrome Mox. I'm very happy with all of those cards. Let's say Mire. Lotus Petal. Lion's Eye Diamond. They could just Echo here. Or they could pass with a bunch of artifacts in play. Come on, Ancient Tomb. No Ancient Tomb. 
Alright, I'm gonna fetch a swamp and play curtains. They got two cards left over there. Let's hope they're bad. Yeah, they didn't brainstorm in the end step or anything. They're just sending it back. Cool. How about Null Rod onto this board full of artifacts? What do you say? They could be holding up something reactive. Like, they could just Echoing Truth from this two-card hand. It can't Abrupt Decay. But I don't think the builds play that card currently. But Seiju ramps me if they have that. Yeah, okay. I mean, they still have one card in hand, but ramping me up into Shouldred is pretty exciting. Or I think I'd probably actually Voidwalker and hold up Bowmaster before I play Shouldred. I think that's just more disruptive and their life total is not currently under that much duress. Voidwalker. And I could just play another Voidwalker now. Though, having Voidwalker plus Bowmaster, that fetch was suspicious. I should have thought about that more. Because Bowmaster messes with Song of Creation and Voidwalker messes with Gaia's Will. And those are the two things that their deck does. And I am just going to drop Bowmaster out here and get the damage going. Ping you. A Mana Source would actually be sick. Another Shouldred. Okay. I think I want to see what this card is they've been holding on to. Transform my curtains. And if their card sucks, I don't have to take it. This is you may choose an online card. And if their card rules, it goes into the void. Like I could just echo of eons and go nuts here. Something's happening in response. Is it just echoing truth? If they echoing truth my void walker and top deck beseech, they still they would need to use Lotus Petal to get triple black. So they can't chain together a bunch of Beseeches. They have decided Voidwalker is that guy. Revealing Eye misses. Attack for five and hope they don't draw a graveyard engine right now. And set fetch. Underground C. They have two black for a top deck Beseech here. Off lands and then they have to use the pedal. Bargain the LED. And then there's nothing to bargain to chain multiples together, and no cards in hand to get a Song of Creation singing. Well, they drew Beseech. Black, black, black one in the pool. Whatever their best card in their deck is, it's available. I'm at 18. Storm is one. If they Gaia's Will, it's two. LED, Petal, three, four. Sack, LED. And tap, Volcanic Island. That's Beseech five. Whatever they get out of the Beseech is six. I don't see the lethal line here, but I'm also not looking at their whole deck. One option they have here is get Song of Creation and then hope that they draw Veil of Summer. Because Veil of Summer draws two cards, they take two Bowmaster pings, and then they don't get hit with Bowmaster anymore, then they can just rip. And if that's the case, if they do just get Song of Creation and pass here, then I'm going to play Shouldered instead because she doesn't target. And that cuts off the Veil of Summer line. They have selected Song of Creation Pass Play. Cool. Found the same line that I did. That means I'm going to attack for five and then play Shouldered. And that should beat them. They would have to like Veil of Summer into into what? Like a bounce spell for Shouldered. But they take six off the Veil of Summer so that doesn't even beat that. Cool. All right. Nice. Normally we save it for round five when I'm like 04 with a brew and then we beat Storm, but we just got it out of the way in round one. On to the next one. If you're looking to run a CEDH or 1v1 tournament, Eminence Gaming has your back with Command Tower. With Command Tower's intuitive tournament manager dashboard, you can handle deckless submission and player management with just a few clicks. Players just need to scan the event's QR code for access to the full tournament bracket, including seamless pairings and real-time standing updates. Take the guesswork out of tournament organizing. Try Command Tower for your next event. I'm on the play in round two. I just have Thoughtseize go, turn two, Shouldered. That's pretty strong. I'm going to keep. Opponent mold to five. That's nice against my Thoughtseize play. What are you doing over there? How can I collapse it today? Punishing Fire crop rotation. Wow. It was just a bad... Luck Mulligan, not a combo deck. Try to go fast. All right, I'll take that. He fire Yavimaya double stage. So I do need to be cognizant of Merit Lage. Could happen. Oh, sick. We got the whole combo set up here. Chrome Mox. I don't need concealing curtains here. Just jamming shoulder it in. This does the most damage the quickest. 
If I draw a mana source next turn, I can dark deal with Bowmaster and Shouldered out. Fingers crossed to cause massive chaos. Land, land, land. I drew a Shouldered. Boring. Okay. Now I can dark deal when I know their hand already kind of sucks. They would draw three cards off that. I think I want to set up the Bowmaster and try to get him with multiples. Just combo kill him all at once. Windswept Teeth. I didn't know about that one. That probably accesses black mana, safe to say. Or, or black. Red mana for Punishing Fire. Okay, I'm going to attack and see what they say about that. If they fetch to P-Fire the Orc, that's the same damage the Orc would deal. Yeah, this Dark Deal should be lethal here. They're only drawing two cards, but they're taking five, then they get a draw step. Oh wow, they went after the army. Too clever for their own good. Light it up, squad. I guess I'm about to draw some new cards, so I might as well actually float the black. I was going to tap this for green, but flip it. They're going to draw two cards, which deals six damage to them. Heck yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes. That was awesome. Okay, we're playing against lands. This is a deck where Leyline of the Void actually does matter if they get loam stuff going. Sheltered's Edict is in my sideboard, but Baleful Mastery is in my main deck, and this Exile's Merrill Age is just fine. I don't think I want to try to Trinisphere this deck. They're a better prison deck than I am, and they're better at ramping than I am. I can see myself getting locked under my own 3-ball when they wasteland my, my Ancient Tomb. I'll pass on that, thanks. Powder Keg messes up Dark Depths and... Or not Dark Depths, uh, Mox Diamond and Urza Saga. Not sure if I want to make room for that. Still thinking about it. I don't really care about Concealing Curtains for this matchup. Gothy Voidwalker is great. They don't do a lot of drawing into Bowmaster, but kind of the point of my deck is I, I force that to happen. I'm still going to keep those. Thoughtseize does fall off quick. I still want three, but I don't need all four. Actually, I could leave the Powder Kegs out, just bring in Ley Lines, and try to send it on, on Combo Town again. I talked myself into that. Let's do it. Okay, I have Leyline of the Void and then turn one Exsanguinator Cavalry. I'll try it. Opponent kept seven. I could pitch Thoughtseize, then just start chunking with my, my Cavalry. Mana Bond, yikes. Okay. They are this build of the deck. I might just die here. If they can make Merit Lage. But if they were counting on a loam, they're in trouble. Yeah, they just declined their bond trigger. Love it. Ancient Tomb. Maybe I should have thought seized them. Nah. Thought seize is for the weak. I'm going to pitch the thought seize and play Exsanguinator Cavalry. I could pitch Exsanguinator Cavalry and play Shouldered. But I think I'd rather just have two things. Because I can just cast Shouldered next turn. And let these horses gallop. I am deeply exposed to a force of vigor, but it didn't happen. I'll take that as a good sign. Crop Rotation can get a Caracas, which answers Shouldred. They're mulching here. Life from the Lone Crop Rotation to the bin. Maze of Ith, Tranquil Thicket in hand. Let's see if they're ready to dump their hand in. We're going to see that Maze of Ith. We are. Okay. Uh, they lost a mulch here, but they have Merrill Age in that speed stage. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. And this does all work. I need Baleful Mastery. I did not need Exsanguinator Cavalry. Okay, yeah, they can make Dark Depths here. I'm just going to concede. All right, they found what they needed. They are 8 Mulch, which I now know. I think Shulch's Edict as additional copies, knowing that they could go this fast, is worth doing. Fate Unraveler probably can chill, and I like Thoughtseize even more now that I know they're the, the combo slanted build of the deck. And I like Leyline even more now. I think an Exsanguinator Cavalry is the other cut. I have plenty of ways to win the game. I just need to not die. Thoughtseize on the play. Keep it. I'd like another land, but I am playing on two mana if I need to do that. I wonder if I'm supposed to read that they're eight mulch from the Punishing Fire. That card has not been seen in regular lands in a very long time. No Leyline this game. Thoughtseize you. Exploration, the full Dark Depths combo. Cool. I'll take the exploration. It'd be a great time to draw that land. Diamond discarded the depths. That means they drew loam. Or it means they're planning for a longer game where they assume they're going to need loam. Come on, land. Always had it. 
I think Bowmaster is the worst creature in my hand. Send in the cavalry. I could have dark dealed the Thespian stage out of their hand. I'm just worried about digging them into loam after they discarded the depths. Mulch, which uh, found a ghost quarter and a Caracas. Lost a Kozlix return and another mulch. And they're pretty well defensed up here if they just play the Maze of Ith. Ugh. Yeah, I'm actually in a bad spot. Them flipping that Caracas is rough. Bowmaster helps. I'll put them to the test, see if they know how to tap their Maze of Ith. They figured it out. Okay, Bowmaster makes Dark Deal actually deal damage. I do remain concerned about digging them into a loam. They're mulching again. They hit Yavamaya and Windswept Heath, lost an exploration and a crop rot. Played their stage, and I will be able to push for a pretty good chunk of damage this turn between the Bowmaster, the Orc Army, that's going to be pretty big, and the Cavalry. Okay, I can Ancient Tomb and then draw zero cards off Dark Deal. Or I could hold back the Tomb. What does this even do? Yeah, I think I actually like having access to Ancient Tomb. We're going to make a dark deal here. You're going to draw four. I'm going to get a big ol' arc army. They had a second dark depths in hand. This also clears the Caracas. It's more looks at loam, like I keep saying, but it is the, the damage dealing play that I have right now. And if they brick the orc army instead of the exsanguinator cavalry, I gain some life and make a blood, and the blood can dig for outs to merit lage. That's actually an interesting decision for them. Yep, they just went for max damage prevention. Cavalry's bigger. I get a blood. Okay, did I send them into a game-ending engine? Two of their Dark Depths are already in the graveyard. It's a second Maze of Ith. Alright, I'm still pushing a damage here. I am going to blood away this polluted Delta. I don't want that. Ooh. I'm going to cast Ley Line of the Void. And then I will push one damage through here. The strength of my mighty sword. Or my mighty bow, I guess, as the case may be. And step Thespian stage is going to copy something. A third Maze of Ith. Okay. They're now completely stable. For the time being. I don't play a Pithing Needle or anything of the sort. Oh, that's bad. Forest. Wasteland. I don't mind Wasteland that much. And it stops Shouldered. That's the only card it stops. And with only two cards in their hand, Dark Deal barely even does anything at this point. Yeah, I think Shouldered is my best draw. And whatever it is needs to show up before they find a Dark Depths or a Loam. Wooded Foothills was their play. I am going to fetch. I do just want to thin my deck here. No Brainstorms coming. Just looking for spells. Yo! <laughs> uh, right, this card's in the deck. All right. Let's party. Pain's reward. This is why we're here. Opponent can't afford to bid that much. I'm going to start the bidding at one. And there's a good chance I just draw four off of it. Oh, can I bid zero? I'm still just going to bid one. I guess zero is a number, technically. Yeah, they said no thanks. <laughs> Go ahead, have it. I don't give a shit. That's what they said. I drew Shouldered and Baleful Mastery, which are the two best cards that I could have. I guess I actually should be attacking because it taps their Maze of it, so they or their Thespian Stage Maze of it, so they can't just move it around and be other things. At first, I was like, nah, I'm not going to be a jerk and just make them waste time. But there's actual strategic value to that, which is a, a different thing. Okay, now I will attack with my creatures. Now that I've thought about that, not just being a jerk here. If that was just a maze of it, I wouldn't be attacking. That's being stage is tapped. Going to play shouldered here. And I'm still holding up the Baleful Mastery. Now we got a real clock and real defense. And if I exile a Merit Lage, they lose two life. That Caracas is in the graveyard. They'd have to cast Loam into Leyline of the Void to get it back, which, I mean, they would definitely do because Loam right now gets back Caracas, bounces shoulder it, and prevents dark, presents Dark Depths. But if they Depths, they lose the third maze of it, and then I'm pushing damage again. This is a fun game. Paint reward, huh? Just draw four. Just put those right in my hand. Thank you. They did have Loam, and they're targeting Caracas, Yavamaya Depths, as we might have imagined. There's the Depths. There's the Caracas. Now they have to decide what they want to play around. They haven't seen Wasteland out of me, though I could, it could be conceivable that I play it. And they should balance Shouldered now, because it's happening anyway. Don't let me gain two life. Yep, good call. 
And I'm going to attack. Oh, I should have played children first. This is too life. They're not going to lose. Tilt, 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 tilt. Lucy Goosey. I've been talking this whole time about how Elf Mastery's extra damage with children. And a damage is going to get through here because their Maze of it is their, their Dark Depths. Uh, I'm so annoyed with myself right now that I didn't play the shoulder. Was that literally lethal? No. It was not lethal. And I can just exile Merit Lage without them drawing a card. Yeah, I'll just do that. The extra one from Bowmasters isn't changing my life here. Exile, target thing. And all that stuff just went into the void. That that's being staged, the Dark Depths alone. It's all gone. They have to rebuild from nothing. And I'm pushing one damage again. And I think it is worth it to play out the Shouldered. That kind of Rashad imports them. It makes them Caracas every upkeep so they don't lose two life. Yep, there it is. Which taps them out for my turn. So if I draw a Dark Deal, I could Shouldered spin and they die. Yeah, I could have them at four right now if I played the Shouldered pre combat. But they would be plus one card as well. All right, Punishing Fire clears my little homie. Yavimaya, that's the last card we knew about from Loam. Something else is happening too. Oh, they had another Loam which picked up Ghost Quarter, Dark Depths, Windswept Heath. Okay. They need to find a stage, but they do have Adepts. If they have a crop rotation, that's trouble. Another Bowmaster. That doesn't really help me now, but it will push damage next turn. And because their Maze of Iths are forests, I have to keep tapping them low here. This is a real decision. I'm not just wasting time. I go back to pushing one damage a turn next turn. Children's in my hand. The Sage doing my Ley Line. Okay. That does unlock some goods. They've used two Loams and a Punishing Fire already. But their Graveyard is a resource for their deck, big time. Tranquil Thicket. Oh no, I forgot to play the Bowmaster. Oh no, I'm such a brick. Uh, I just was like, okay, they have that card. Busy analyzing, not busy dealing one damage to them. Yeah, dang it. Okay, they're going to be at six. They should be at five. Important lesson here, though. If you mess up, but it's still right to play your card, you have to play your card. Just take your medicine, look embarrassed, but don't like hide the Bowmaster for a turn cycle. Hide your shame. Sick. That was a great draw. I'm going to attack with my creatures first and hope they don't have crop rotation. Maze of Ith activated. Maze of Ith activated. They take their one. I'm going to play my Shouldered and my Void Walker. And they just killed Leyline of the Void. Let's hope this Void Walker puts them back in whatever squeeze they were trying to get out of. It's certainly an extra body on the board. It's real damage. And they're slow melting. They just spent three mana to take a counter off Dark Depths. That's a good sign for me. Bounce the shoulder. In. We have that pattern down now. I don't play a Caracas or anything. So if they crop rotate into the void, I can't like crop rotate back and get Caracas, unfortunately. Yeah, they could actually be dead on board right now if I had sniped this Tranquil Thicket because I'm attacking for four outside of the two Maze of Ith's. This is an entire whole ass turn that I'm giving them miserable, painful stuff. Maybe I'll just draw the other dark deal and it doesn't matter. Thoughtsies, do I care what's in their hand? Kind of. The difference between 11 and 9 life is not important here. I'll still win a Pain's Reward. I'm still dead to Merit Lage. Oh, they had it! Crop Rotation, which goes into the Void. And Visage is their only card left. Okay, well, I wasn't losing anyway. Good news, everyone. I was just dead. Windswept Peath Crop Rotation are the cards in the Void. Yep, there's no tech lands. All my lands are just swamps and ancient tombs. Okay, we are dead to Merit Lage here. Yes, I should still attack with my creatures in case they play around another removal spell, which they don't have a whole lot of time left to do. Ooh, okay. They let my Exsanguinator Cavalry through. This gives me a blood. This gives me a chance to answer Dark Depths. This has Menace. They may have forgotten about that. Okay, this blood token is the redraw. The redraw to rule them all. Try again, illegal blocking. They definitely forgot about Menace. Okay, so they're going to two here. Anything that forces them to draw a card plays here. I can also crop rotate. 
I can Thespian Stage too. Does that help? Like if I play Thespian Stage, copy Maze of Ith or Caracas, that won't help until next turn. I need Shoulder to make them draw a card now. If I draw the ability to do that. Yeah, I think I have to blood away the Dark Ritual. Five, six, seven. I believe I still have my land drop. Yeah, I have not played a land this turn, and there's multiple available under Void Walker. Okay, Blood Token. Find me the hit. Get me paid here. Zach, discard this Dark Ritual. Show me the Edict, Baleful Mastery. Let's go. Let's go. Pain's reward. <laughs> uh, well, that's a lot more looks at this card. And I know I can win the bidding. Okay, one, two, three. I'm about to draw four. Get myself paid here. Pain's reward. Chain them together. I could even Pain's reward into Pain's reward. And then still have a land drop to play a two mana removal spell. I'm gonna bid my one. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Agonim's Awakening. I can do it for not enough, because that's not how this card works. Agonim's Awakening can get back Bowmaster, and that one damage I missed is going to kill me this game after all. Yeah, they could be at one right now. I reanimate Bowmaster and then we win. Oh, what a what a heartbreaker. Just you flinch for one second and you're dead, dummy. Just taking one more look at the battlefield, seeing if there's anything to be done with this Thespian Sage. Just a little too slow. Crop rotation still doesn't help, even with the new information I have. Yep, my own fault. Threw it away. GG's. On to the next round. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including Legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks. And groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. On the draw for round three, I have turn one nothing, turn two Trinosphere. I am going to try this. Opponent said GG in the chat. I wonder if they mean like good luck or have fun, <laughs> but they definitely said GG. Aggressive if true. Delver of Secrets. Is that what they meant by GG? Can't beat that card. That might be true. And they have a bauble. A dark ritual would be sick here. A chrome mox also pretty sick here. Okay. Um I can go for Bowmaster now and play around days with it. Yeah, I'm gonna Chrome Mox Exile a Shouldered. That just costs the most in this matchup where mana values matter a lot. And then I'm gonna pass and see if they bobble. It is very obvious what I'm doing here. Okay, they bobbled. They need Force of Will. Days isn't good enough. If this resolves, I'm going to be pretty hyped, actually. It does not. Okay. Pitching Murktide. Got me good. Now my Exsanguinator Cavalries need to race this Delver of Secrets. Which, I mean, like I said, they stack on top of each other. Two of them is pretty good. Wasteland is the most horrifying card for me right now. They have a Ponder to look for a Wasteland. Did not shuffle. Volcanic Island. Okay. Now I have to determine if I think Trinisphere or Dumping Cavalries. Oh, now we don't have to determine shit. All right. Three, four, five, six. Dark Ritual. Trinisphere. This is the best test of them all. You either have Force of Will here or you don't. I guess I'm supposed to play the Swamp first because if they daze, I have to take two and then not cast a spell when I could have just taken one. I just got excited. <laughs> I'm just bleeding off points of damage against an active Delver. Out of pure excitement. Okay, force blue card, pitching ponder, and then I play the card I actually cared about, which is Exsanguinator Cavalry. Days is good, Lightning Bolt's good, Murktide Regent's good. Otherwise, I'm ready to race. No attack from Telver. Do we have another opponent who didn't read Menace? I think we do. I'm gonna play my Exsanguinator Cavalry. I'm gonna drop my land out because Ancient Tomb actually matters a lot here. They're seeking a beast in response. They flipped Ponder Mishra's Bauble. Okay, I mean, looks like I'm going to have a 4-3 and two blood tokens. Let's see if they try to block. Nope, okay. Interesting. 
and it literally can't block. So I, I don't know what just happened there. Maybe they noticed it had menace on my turn. But I have a 4-5. That's bigger than Lightning Bolt. They need an Unholy Heat to clear that at this point. Four Life Lake a turn races Delver. I am netting damage on the, the race. Another Bobble from Hand. Okay. The Ponder from Exile. They did get full value out of the Questing Druid. Let's see if they can find green mana to put this creature into play or a Bolt or Unholy Heat to try to stabilize. I think if I get another connection in with these two creatures, the game is over. Right now, they could still stabilize. Especially if they play on Holy Heat. They didn't shuffle. Like what they found. They found access to Questing Druid, if that's what they got. But they're brainstorming instead. They're digging for that bolt. Fetching. They have a red man in the pool. Dragon's Rage Channeler. Okay. They can trade Delver for one of my Exsanguinator Cavalries this turn. They can double block the, the little one. Or they can double block the big one and lose Dragon's Rage Channeler. We six to draw a removal spell. Concealing curtains. Okay. Is this useful to me? Forcing them to draw cards at this particular time isn't that thrilling. But I would like to see what they just drew, because everything they just drew was at random. If I can clear a Murktide or something, know how to phase out this combat. Because DLC has to attack, and my creatures have menace. I could just take three for a turn and then get through untouchably. Yeah, I'm going to take this back up DRC, leave them with a daze. Now I can offer the trade with one of my knights. I think I want to do that. They can double block this one and lose Delver, double block this one and lose DRC. Either way, the other one gets another two triggers. And I have another menace creature in play. Right, make sure DRC is first. That is the card I respect more on this board. This knight becomes 4-5. I gain 6. 4 blood tokens ready to go. This is fun. I was suspicious of Exsanguinator Cavalry when I first started seeing it showing up in Legacy lists. This card is from March on the Machine. It's not even new. It's like a year old. But it's just starting to get the heat on it. They're fetching here. The green source gets the questing druid in, at least. Their hand is Days and One Unknown. Definitely gonna loot away the swamp. Into another cavalry, let's go! Okay, if I cast this cavalry... They could daze it just to put a counter on Questing Druid. I don't think I care about that. I'd rather keep the Night Triggers going. And they didn't even do that. Cool. I'm going to smush with these Menace Creatures. This will at least get a trade. And push 3 damage. Seeking the Beast over the top of it. Okay. That doesn't change the combat math at all. They exiled Spell Pierce and Daze. I don't care about those. Yeah, if they had questing, if they had Seek the Beast in response to this knight, flip the second days, 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 then I just don't even have it attacks. I think they could have sequenced that better. They saved it to be a combat trick. Wow, no blocks. They don't want to trade. Okay, I'm now over 20 life. I have a 6-7. Even Unholy he doesn't beat this thing at this point. They have two reactive spells that are going to burn off on their turn. And if they draw like a Ponder, they could daze it and pierce it just to get counters on Beast and then pay for their own counter spells. Oh, they have Questing Druid, at least. They could daze this, pierce their daze. Not interested. Okay. That's also allowed. Delver of Secrets. This does trigger the boys. I have three menace, menace creatures to their three blockers. They can only block one of my creatures, and any two of them is lethal here. Okay, they found the daze line. It doesn't matter now that I know what their cards are, but they did find the line. Yep, piercing the days. They could even daze the days again. I mean, like, they could attack me for eight here and then still just die. Oh, right, the Delver is another blocker. So they can go to one and actually get some good trades. Is that true? Do they Are the trades actually good here? They're holding a daze. Definitely going to blood away this Bloodstained Mire. Flavor win. Uh, I'm going to use Ancient Tomb to blood away Ancient Tomb. I've gained so much life. Uncomfortable saving black for, for good reasons. Ooh. This is really good next turn. It currently rams into days and doesn't do anything. As far as combat, if they double block caval small cavalry with dru small druid and delver, I kill delver, I lose cavalry. And they block, they have to block big cavalry or they lose. So big cavalry gets blocked by. Questing Druid, Big Druid, and Delver, then they have a real trade. 
Then they have two creatures to my one creature next turn. I have three, four, five. This Agonim's Awakening is actually getting squeezed by the days we know is in their hand. I'm not sure if this gets better if I wait. I could also just keep blooding and try to find a Bowmaster or Baleful Mastery to actually win the game quickly. I think this Agonim's Awakening is really good, though. Do they have a block that kills zero of their creatures? No. Five, six, seven. This is only six. Okay, I'm one point short of that being good. They can't get me down to just revealing eye. But I get to kill a bunch of their creatures. I am going to send it here. I'm worried about them finding critical mass and then coming back over the top. And questing druids were only going to get bigger over time. Oh, wow. Okay, they leave me with the four or five. I'm going to... They'd rather be at two facing down a four or five than at one facing down a three four is the decision they just made. Uh, Magic Online, what's up? Okay, um, it's making a selection for that one. I haven't had a combat where multiple creatures were double blocked in a long time. I hope if I hit OK, or do I have to click on my creature? If this Delver dies instead of this Questing Druid, I'm going to lose my mind. I hit OK. Okay, it, it then selects the other creature. Okay. I gotta play more limited. Okay, I do get two more blood tokens here. I kill their worst creature and their best creature, and I gain eight life. I have a four or five. And if I ever find enough mana, I can Agonim's Awakening for Orcish Bowmaster and or Concealing Courtyards and or or Concealing Curtains and or Exsanguinator Cavalry. There's a lot to like about my position. I just gotta hit land drops before I die. The Dark Deal. Uh, I'm not casting that card. I am blooding this card away. I just want to hit land drop so I can get this awakening over days. Chromox not really a land drop, not in the way that I care about. Pain's reward, that'll be good next turn. Okay, well, I'm going to win that bet. I'm going to pass. I could cast this now and get the days out of their hand, but I'd rather just resolve my spell, if we're being honest. Ponder, portent. The Ponder shuffled. Questing Druid is now a 6-6, six, six, big enough to party. I'm glad I made that attack when I did to whittle their board down. So bidding 0 versus 1 actually does matter, because if I bid 0, they can bid 1, then I have to pay 2 to beat them. But if I bid 1, they can't pay 2. Bane's reward. I'm going to bid 1. I'm at 25 life. I can't win this fight. And if they force this pitching days, then I play Dothy Voidwalker, and they're dead to that. Wow, they are forcing this. Force pitching days. Sick. Okay, cool. And if your last card in hand is also days, good job, but otherwise I'm presenting an unblockable creature. And if your last card is days, I just cleared the way for Bowmaster next turn out of the graveyard. So this was... I feel like I'm in pretty good shape right now. I think Merktide doesn't matter at this point. Yep, there's Merktide. They can attack me for 11, and I'm still just fine on life total. And if their last card in hand is a bolt to stabilize against Voidwalker, then they have no counter spells for my Agonim's Awakening, which presents a lethal Bowmaster. These blood tokens were dope. Blood tokens and lifelink both just go in the distance here. No blocks. Beautiful mastery. All right, well, I'm just going to attack for three, and if your hand is bolt, you die to Bowmaster. Classic Delver shit. They actually did have it. But so did I. One, two, three, one, two. Agadim's Awakening. Target Orcish Bowmaster and Concealing Curtains. Kachow. The play that would have won last round as well if I had played correctly. But I feel like I played this one pretty well. Boom. GG. Children's Edict and Fatal Push come in here. Plague Engineer might be good enough. They do have a lot of humans in their deck. I feel like the Dark Deal is completely unnecessary. They're just going to draw so many cards on their own. I don't need to force them to. They're Delver. That's what they do. I like Thoughtseize. I like basically everything. I think Concealing Curtains is kind of mid, even though it was just a big part of that game. If I'm spending four total mana to get a creature, I think Plague Engineer probably just stand on its own a little taller. I like the Masteries. I even like Fate Unraveler. Unraveler is undoubtedly worse than Children. Children is legendary, and I play four of them. It would be tough to gum up multiple of those in the hand. Yeah, maybe I do just want to get lower and have Children. Uh, only three of her in there. 
Powder Keg, I could sit that on one and clear out Delvers and DRCs. If I bring that in, basically the equation right now is do I want to min-max on, like, how much do I have to respect their creatures without hurting my own plan too much versus I just want to stop all their creatures and I'll win eventually. I think I can safely cut Fate Unraveler for one of the Powder Kegs. I want the rest of these cards, though. You can't take them away from me. I guess maybe one Chrome Mox. Because that's a card you don't want to draw two copies of in a game. Okay. Talk myself into it. I do not like Leyline. They, yes, they use their graveyard for Murktide and DRC. No, I don't care. Not on that kind of card. Sick. Cape. I could turn one Thoughtseize plus Cavalry. Or no, I can't actually do that. Because that's all my black cards. I do need another black card to pick the Chrome Box. I do like the basic land Thoughtseize start. Opponents on Steam Vents over there. The one of. Okay. I could Thoughtseize them first and then pitch Shoulder it and three ball them. We've seen Spell Pierce in the deck. I'm, I'm going to send the Thoughtseize in. They might Spell Pierce this. They might just show me their hand and then get three balled. They shocked in the steam vents though. It's it's a daze, a spell pierce, or a brainstorm. Those are the cards they could have. Okay. And they use the daze. I'm going for it. This is too juicy. If they have force blue card as well, they got me. Dark ritual. Drenosphere. F6. It happens or it doesn't. Yeah. Okay, now I just need a land to cast this cavalry before they have three lands in play. Steam vents. Tapped. Come on, land. Well, I hope it's still worse for them than it is for me. Fingers crossed. You don't play Steam Vents first if you have more lands, so they drew, the, drew that one since turn one. And, oh no, more three balls. This is the second league in like two weeks where I three balled Delver early, and then they just dug out of it before I did. Jesus. Oh, they have multiple Steam Vents in their deck? Wow. What's going on over there? This is Magic Online. I think Steam Vents cost more than Volcanic Island. Three mana for a Dragon's Rage channel here. I'm now officially worried. Oh my god. If they have something like a Meltdown or even a Petty Theft that messes with my Chrome Mox, I'm in all sorts of pain. Their velocity is going to be pretty bad. Oh my goodness. Uh, like, even if they seek the Beast here, they can't cast multiple spells off it. But if they hit land one drop, or land spell, that's pretty good. Oi, oi, oi. Okay, they milled a Force of Will, and they hit land Rough Tumble. Rough Tumble's not going to save them here. That's a, a miss, but the land's a hit. They could cast a 6-6 six, six Murktide right now. Uh, imagine a world where I just had a 7-7 seven, seven Exsanguinator Cavalry going in. All these blood tokens looting away the Trinospheres and stuff. That's the world I'm meant to live in. Instead, I'm cursed into this existence. Meltdown. They put... They had to put two men into it. That makes sense. Okay. My deck does have Ancient Tomb in it which can still play this game. Ancient Tomb off the top gets me going. Oh, another three drop. Every card's a three drop. Checkmate. They actually could have melted down the Trinosphere and decided not to, which I think is actually clever. Like They had four mana. They could have taken it out, but they realized it's worse for me than it is for them at this point. Oh, no. I'm going to go to clean up, discard another Trinosphere. Something's happening in the end step. A brainstorm. They're still not delirious from that. Wasteland. Okay. They have a Wasteland, which means if I draw Ancient Tomb, I get one spell before I don't get spells anymore. Three mana for a Delver. DRC still sleeping. A Swamp. Okay. I can draw another Swamp here and just be playing the same one spell a turn as them. Delver flipped revealing Lightning Bolt, which means my first spell is going to have to be Powder Keg. I deck Swamp, Swamp, Swamp. Uh, Not a Swamp. But it does cast spells. I could deem the Undercrypt. I'll take a million for the pleasure. And play Powder Keg. I think I'm literally just dead. Because I had to zap that in. Yeah, maybe I may have just revealed Powder Keg for no reason. Mostly just finding my third land on turn 9. After 3-balling my opponent on turn 1. Not where I wanted to be in life. Cool. Alright, I'm dead. Let's try that again. I'm on the play this time. And I don't think my plan changes. I still think Trinisphere is good, even though it betrayed me. I have a one lander. I'm not going to keep this one. Just no prospects of additional lands here. Oh no, deck. Not like this. Straight to five. I will keep this one and put 
the two Baleful Masteries to the bottom. I think Thoughtseize and Powder Keg are going to be my interaction to start this game. Thoughtseize. Look at this nice seven card hand they've assembled for themselves. I'm going to take Ponder. Like, Force of Will is annoying, but the Ponder actually... I, I need them to just stumble for a while and not really get anything going. Powder Keg. I'm going to play it. Just sit it out there on one. Leave it on one for the whole game. If they want to force this, fine. If they drew days this turn, fine. Scalding Tarn. Powder Keg goes up to one. Chromox is interesting. I'm just going to play Plague Engineer. I've seen their hand recently. If they've drawn a daze, okay. If they force this, okay. Human. And now we are passing. And hoping that this attacks 10 times and my opponent dies. Volcanic Island. We know their deck has at least two steam vents, so they're casting a spell here. Seek the Beast. Flipped. DRC Delver. Look at all these humans. One, two, three. I don't have a freaking lightning bolt here, please. Uh, okay. That's dead. They still play them because they have two Merktites in their hand. But feels good. There's the Wasteland. Now I need to figure out how I'm going to beat a Merktide region. I don't think getting Powder Keg up to seven is the answer. Yeah, Baleful Mastery is the man answer, which I shuffled two of them away on my Mulligan. And they're in my deck somewhere. I have shuffled since I bottomed them. The bad news is, I know they have Force Blue card. I think I'm probably a little out of luck here. That Mold of Five, just crushing. Uh, this is dead. Just running humans out there like crazy into the buzzsaw. And none of those humans make Merktide bigger. Yeah, I, I think that is almost certainly just incorrect to play the Questing Druid there. It costs two mana to put something in your graveyard where it's worth one mana. You could have just tapped lands to play Merktide region. And I'm going to offer my Death Touch creature with your Merktide next turn for sure. And then the Questing Druid can hang out. I'm still going to lose this game, but I'm just saying. Suspicious. Meltdown X equals two. Not on my watch. Bang. Blow up the one drops. Moral victory. I wonder how many one drops they were holding on to. Most of them died a plague engineer anyway. Getting the meltdown in the graveyard is extra power on both the Merc Titan hand and Merc Titan play starting next turn. Trinosphere. This does not matter here, but I hope they force it. Okay. They correctly identified that it doesn't matter. Taking four down to eight. They cannot play Merc Tide right now. They can still force from hand. These Trinospheres just middle fingers in the air saying, here we are, you dummy. Remember me? This card that would have been useful four turns ago, or if I had drawn a land last game. But instead, here they are mocking me when I just need a spell to cast. And now I can't even run a runner because I know they have Force Blue card and they have this lethal thing in play. GG opponent. Cool. Yeah, Mold of Five, brutal. Uh, missing land number three until turn nine last game, brutal. Uh, little little run beds there, but maybe that is a sign that the deck needs another land in it. I'm playing 18 lands with four Chrome Mocks, which is pretty standard in Stompy style decks. And you could put another Swamp in here. You could put another Agadim's Awakening in here. There's options. And Delver is specifically the matchup where you want to hit every land drop until you have five mana. Yeah, tough squeeze there. On to the next round. The official Bosch and Roll Island Ponder Keep shirt is available exclusively through Coalesce Apparel. This Magic Player owned business is a staple of our community. They keep this channel on the air, and it's my pleasure to partner with them for this product. Coalesce is the best magic apparel on the market. They have awesome new designs coming out all the time. Use code Bosch and Roll to get 10% off your order only at coalesceapparel.shop. It's round four. I'm playing against a Yorian. I have this uh, two-land Trinosphere hand again. I mean, I'm definitely keeping this. It's just, do I run the ball out? I think I want to Thought Seize them. This is where their death index is. They kept a one-land triple vial hand, and I hate my life. Okay, they kept a four-lander. They are better set up for a Trinosphere game than I am. I'm going to take a Plow because Bowmaster kills the Thalia anyway. Let's get a clean trade there. It's Caracas. Okay, multiple dark rituals now, which doesn't really help my life. I'm just going to pass and hope they play the Thalia. 
if they wait until turn three and then protect it with Caracas, that sucks. But I hope they read this as a combo deck. Nope, they're just reading it as put your cards away, nerd. Okay, three ball now forces them to tap out if they want to play Thalia. And then I can kill Thalia. They could just put Yorin in hand. They're under no pressure. They don't have to put a creature into play. And they have the Black Splash, so they could just wait and have their own Bowmaster at some point. Yeah, they correctly realize that they don't need to do anything right now, and they can just wait a turn and protect Thalia with Caracas. Good Death and Dax's players are bullshit. They should all be bad. Cavalry is interesting. I know they have a Swords to Plowshares, which means I'm not inclined to run the Cavalry out. My deck's full of Discard, and I do have this Bowmaster. They have a Bowmaster. Cool. All right, now I have a target, at least. Mine kills yours. And now the first starts flying. They could Thalia. They could plow. If they draw Wasteland. Oh, no! I spoke it into existence. Uh, I'm going to lose in my friggin' transfer every round this match. I can already feel it. Okay, Thalia is here now. I need to draw a Swamp right now to play this game. I am going to trade with Orc Army. I'm on damage control at this point. Oh, sweet relief. Okay. Well, they could still plow this Exsanguinator, but it will cost them their turn, and then the plow's gone. Can't afford to wait for a, a golden invitation at this point. I'm just going to put my cards into play and hope to outdraw them from here. And notice what's going on, too. Like My opponent, under no pressure, just took no game actions, and they're like, yeah, all of this is fine. Just pass, 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 until they had enough mana to Thalia through Trinisphere and Protector with Caracas. A uh, bad Death and Daxes player, I would have beat on turn two, but instead I'm like losing on turn seven. I'm going to play Chrome Mox and imprint a Dark Ritual. That is as good as that's going to get. And they didn't port me because they valued protecting Thalia over that. And I got away with a stable mana source underneath it. I think my deck might need some Wastelands or Pithing Needle. The Caracas multiple times now has just dumpstered me, and Shouldered, which would normally be my best draw, is not even a good card right now. I could Mastery the Thalia here, or I could just try to draw a 3-drop and play it. I'm going to try to draw a 3-drop. Okay. That counts. Qualifies. They're way ahead on the damage race at this point. Even if I Baleful Mastery the Yorion... Oh, they drew another Plow. Cool. I'm still not going to Baleful Mastery this Thalia. I want Exsanguinator. I want something to do here. Another Bowmaster. I have quite enough Chrome Boxes, though, deck. I'm way behind on the Pain's Reward battle. That's embarrassing. Drawing my namesake card and not being in a position to cast it. Though Bowmaster lighting up their board isn't that bad either. So they have red and black in their deck. I don't think the red splash affects me that much. That's for, like, Magus of the Moon. Maybe they could fourth Aerolingus. That would be crazy. And Yorian is just a giant body here that untaps Thalia. Do they draw a card anyway, even if Baleful Mastery fizzles? I'm reading this card, and I'm not quite sure how this is going to work. Okay, I'm going to play the, the cheat mode. I think this is all going to fizzle, but it's just weird that it's like a whole different line of text. Yeah, okay. It does, in fact, fizzle. Ooh, the deal. Well, let's see what next turn looks like. Maybe I could kill some stuff. They have a land and a Yorian. The Dark Deal is only going to draw them one card. And they can bounce Thalia. All right, yeah, I'm super dead. Yeah, I'm not drawing any outs here. I don't think Trinisphere was my problem that game. It was uh, the lack of spells versus my opponent playing well. Turok comes in, Shouldred's Edict comes in, Fatal Push comes in, Plague Engineer. I can see arguments for Powder Keg. I can see arguments for Null Rod, though I won't hear them. I am boarding out Trinisphere. My opponent's just better at functioning on low resource, huge land drop situations than I am. Children's risky because they're a deck with four Caracases, and my deck can't actually answer them. That's embarrassing. Whoops. I'm actually going to cut another Children for the same reason. I'm going to get a little thinner on Chrome Mox, a little thinner on Dark Ritual. These are cards I don't want to draw in the mid game when we get into that grindy spot. I want to see them early so I can get that early advantage. I do like Thoughtseize. Concealing Curtains is fine. This is a deck that doesn't draw cards on their own. And I have to make them. 
I'm just going to cut another shoulder. She's actually just really bad against this Caracas theme deck. All right, I'm going to go like this. No powder keg, no null rod. Run it. Thoughtseize and mana to play cards with. Let's go. Three actual swamps. Is it my birthday? Thought sees you. They mold to six. Get an extra card here. Skyclave, Vile, Thalia, Plow. I mean, obviously I have problems with Vile. Sort of Plowshare is kind of a beating as well. I think Vile is a longer term problem here. So my engineer can clear out the Thalia. I'm not worried about Wasteland. Couldn't take it anyway, but I'm not worried about it. We've got a Scrubland. Big Shieldred. Okay. Let's see if they take the super patient line again, or if they actually play out their Thalia. Okay, they are taking the patient line again. That's okay, though. I will use the Exsanguinator Cavalry to draw out the Plow, and then I can jam Shieldred into the Thalia on the following turn. Yeah, there goes the Plow. It's fine. I want them to miss their land drop outright, but if they are going to have a land, I hope it's not Caracas. And they have Marsh Flats. Okay. And they put Yoran in hand rather than putting any creatures into play. Okay. Hecadeem the Undercrypt, zap it in, play Shouldered. I know they have Skyclave Apparition, but I have Edict that can remove that. They're going to lose at least two life from Shouldered and then have to interact with her. Apparition, Wasteland is fine here. If the Thalia is still in their hand. I'm going to pass and see what they do. They probably just go to combat, and then I edict their creature. And then Flicker Wisp messes me up. Sacrifice a non-token, please. Ooh, do they have a flash creature? Wow, I blew it. I blew it so hard. Yeah, they did have a flash creature, and one that I knew about. It is super illuminating when you play against an opponent who is both skilled and a little bit lucky. And... This, it is really important, like, I, I say it all the time, like, play to spots, I'll allow yourself to get lucky, is part of magic, and my opponent has played a highly skilled game, and then they also just ran land, 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 after I saw a two-lander, and then Orcish Bowmaster on the turn where I needed them not to have a flash creature. Those things didn't need to happen, but they did, and my opponent put themselves in the position to do that. I'm gonna kill all humans. Okay. They have Yorian in hand, and if this match so far has been any indication, their last card is Caracas. <laughs> yeah, fucking there it is, yep. Uh, good stuff. Let's see if they want to run Yorian out down and dirty right now, because I do have Baleful Mastery for it, but if they wait until they have another land ever, I'm in trouble. <laughs> their own Plague Engineer, cool. Name Phyrexian, and then attack for one. Name Orc proactively. Rexian, okay. Orc army can attack now. Okay. Okay, sure. This thing still has Death Touch. Yeah, I was going to make that block anyway. I'm sure my opponent knows that the, my card has Death Touch. Because they have the same card. And I'm going to make them sacrifice a non-token creature. And hope they don't have another damn Bowmaster. There, they can't. It's Yasurion. Information is now complete. And I can Baleful Master Yorion... Unless they draw the land to then cast it with Caracas protection. Okay, yep, they drew they drew a land. It is a Caracas, so they have to legend rule it and lose the land, but still the point remains that I mean, they could have just drawn like some other card there. Either vile. I don't know. Some other shit that isn't good. Okay, Orc Army's attacking. Yorion is bigger than my creature. Dothy Voidwalker is nice. This swings the race. Yeah, they can't attack with Yorion. Yeah, five, six. Yeah, I'm on a three-turn clock. They're on a two. And I can block the Orc army now. Yeah, they have to run pretty good. And they just drew and played Scrubland. So my opponent's stumbling for the first time in the match. And they are attacking with Yorion. Okay, they're giving their deck the chance to deliver a good card. Playing to a spot where they are able to get lucky. Like I said, my opponent knows what's going on here. They can chump block the 4-4. Four, four. And I'm on a two-turn clock, they're on a two-turn clock. The Baleful Mastery can make them pick up the Yorion. Oh, come on. Don't cast a good spell. This is a lot of mana. Sarah Paragon? Jesus. 
Once during each of your turns, you may play a land from your graveyard or cast a permanent with meta value. All right. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. 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 Who gives a shit? Yeah. This is just functionally Luris. In fact, slightly better than Luris. And of all the cards that they could have drawn in their deck, this is what I've been saying the whole time. Just into a position to get lucky. Like that could have been a land. Could have been an Aether Vial. Could have been a Skyclave Apparition. I don't know. Just some normal ass card. I have to exile Leorion here because I'm not beating it. I'm not beating Sarah Paragon either, just for the record. Removal spell, Concealing Curtains. That card is a 3-4 Menace. I guess attacking is about as good as this gets. Yeah, when this dies, they gain 2 life, but at least it's out of play. Curtains, I'm going to flip it. I just want a 3-4 on the battlefield. They have no cards in their hand, but they have freaking Flying Angel Luris in play. They can Skyclave Apparition from the graveyard now, exiling my Eye or my Voidwalker. It went for the Voidwalker. That's the, the fully unblockable one versus the Menace one that can block their Orc. Somehow in a spot where a removal spell stabilizes me, if I can get rid of the Sarah Paragon, we're actually okay. <laughs> Dark Ritual doesn't do it, though. Okay, attack with both my creatures. They chump block Illusion, go to three, and I die. Cool. All right, yeah, that was a, a masterclass opponent played extremely well and has a bunch of spicy tech cards in their deck. They played to spots where those tech cards would break it open, and I do it all the time in this channel. I'm not salting off. Like I'm constantly just like, okay, I need to draw the One Ring here. I need to draw a Sword of Plowshares here. I need to draw, you know, like I say it all the time. There's literally highlight reels uh, of me just calling my shot on videos all the time. And good players are setting themselves up to get lucky. And my opponent put themselves in a position to get lucky, and they got paid off. And that was a really great match. We're a few rounds into the video. Thanks for sticking with me. Friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun, smash that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards. And you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. I'm on the play against another Yorian with another one lander. Gonna mulligan. This hand is exciting. I am going to keep it. And I think I'm gonna bottom the Baleful Mastery and just send it on Exsanguinator Cavalry. I don't know. The Thoughtseize though, like Thoughtseize can punch a hole for the cavalry to ride, but then cavalry's slower. I'm gonna cavalry. My stompy deck, we're gonna act like it. If I wanted to play control, I should have registered Grixis. Alright, let's see what happens here. Swords of Plow serves. Prismatic Vista, okay. Ponder, please ponder, please ponder. Oh god, a swamp. Thought sees me. They're gonna take my pain's reward. Okay, this feels like some kind of Esper Vile deck. Or I guess it could be Yori and Cephalid Breakfast, a thing we haven't seen in a long time, but has been played in decks. Ooh, I can Bane's Reward. I'm gonna attack first. Make sure I win the the bet. Let's get hit and weird. Bane's Reward. I will start the bid at one. This might be the first time someone actually bids back on me. They they clap back with three. I raised it to four. Five. Six. I literally have more life than them, so they'll have to stop at some point. They were happy with six. Okay, cool. All right. The old draw four. They had a chance to thought seize it and didn't. And then it immediately gassed me up. <laughs> thought seize me again. I suspect I'll lose Voidwalker this time. What is this Yorian deck with basic swamp multiple thought seizes? It's wild. And if they take Voidwalker here and then go like Plains Plow, I'm not actually doing anything. I'm very glad I let on Cavalry though. This game has worked out much better than if I had tried to thought seize their hand that had two thought seizes in it. I will say, despite our losing record in the mat or in the the league, Pain's Reward has been great. We, we did fill the brief of who fill the brief. That <laughs> sounds like I shit my pants. We did uh, meet the prompt of making Pain's Reward a playable card. Wow, the solitude was sicko. Okay, well that happened, and they pitched. Lion Sash to do that. So this is another black white taxes kind of nonsense. I could Dark Ritual, Thoughtseize, Baleful Mastery, 
I could Baleful Mastery on the cheap and then Thought Seize them. I could also float mana with Ancient Tomb, Blood Token away the Swamp, and see what my hand looks like. I'm going to do that. Shieldred. I like that card. Okay, I have four, five mana here. I can Thought Seize them, then play Shieldred. All right, fuck Mother of Runes. Marsh Flats is your hand. You got me. Dark Ritual Shouldered. Okay, don't draw Caracas right now. I'm going to lose my mind. Marsh Flats was played. It can put Yorian in hand at the very least. That is what has occurred. I gained two life. This Orcish Bowmasters was kind of the nuts. If they want to absorb this four life, which they basically have to do, then Bowmasters gets to kill Mother. Ping. This is what these Death and Taxes matchups look like when your cards actually line up right and you do stuff. They're the masters of not doing stuff, though. You can't get into a game where you're not doing stuff. They did rip Skyclave Apparition, the card that I didn't want them to have last turn. But I do have a removal spell. You just keep pushing. Cast Baleful Mastery. I'm not going to do the, the cheat mode. I'm more worried about them having more cards right now than I am about being clever with my Bowmaster. Pushing damage. They're dead on board. Yorian's in their hand. If they draw a land, they can play a 4-5. If they don't draw a land, I get to smush. Probably getting a Solitude here to be alive. I guess they could chump. They could like get Bowmaster, chump for a turn. Okay, Flicker Wisp also functions in that regard. I drew a blank. Yeah, they're going to chump and go to 4. Then Flicker Wisp can get rid of the 4-4, four, four, and then they can block Bowmaster, go to 1, and be on a stable board. That's annoying. And they found the land for Yorian next turn, which removes my last attacker. I need something good right now. That wasn't it. Okay, now they have to decide. Yeah, you should trade with Bowmaster if you're going to trade. Yeah, okay. All right, well, they're at three. I have ways in my deck to deal three, but they are ahead now. They have officially taken the lead in the game after, like we talked about, runnering multiple perfect cards in a row while I drew blanks. I can still win a Pain's Reward bet. There's only one Swamp left in my deck. Uh, there's a bunch of Ancient Tombs, though. I'm on a three-turn clock. They're on a three-turn clock. They're actually winning the race if nobody draws a relevant card again. But they're probably going to play, like, Stoneforge Mystic here or some perfect card. Yep. <laughs> Whee! This is why I put Brainstorm in my decks, by the way. Brainstorm and Ponder. I'm descending into madness as my opponent rips Nut Perfects after Nut Perfects, and I draw lands. And I can't even wish, like, oh, what if I draw Ponder? Because it's not in my deck. Brainstorm's not here to save me. Yep. Recruited for a Stoneforge Mystic. I said they're not drawing a Stoneforge Mystic. I forgot that they could just add a whole extra body to the board by recruiting for Stoneforge Mystic. Hecadeem's Awakening here puts a 1-1 one -one into play. Yeah, that's not even good. I think I'm on no outs again, all of a sudden. Uh... Did I miss the damage anywhere? I don't know. Whatever. Here's Shouldered. You go to one, and you can attack me to three and get counters on your Jite, which leaves you functionally at five. Yep, here it comes. What if I drew the shouldered one turn earlier? Was that too much to ask? Uh, I can still... I still win a Pain's Reward battle, because if they draw cards, they die to shouldered. Come on, Pain's Reward off the top. Pain's Reward! Chrome Mox, I hate you so much, you piece of crap. And Stoneforge Mystic being 1-2, just enough to stop this Orc army from bashing two turns in a row. Now I'm dead to this Yorion. Okay, that one I will complain about a little bit. Not that I, like, I mean, it's magic, it's whatever. I'm not, like, actually upset about this. Just uh, compared to my last opponent who played perfectly and had some cool cards in cool spots, that was just like, oop, that's the nuts. Oop, that's the nuts. And I still had the nuts beat if I could find one more point of damage anywhere. And I think I am going to do the same sideboard plan here. Just all this removal and Turok in and then some situational cards I don't want and cards that are ice cold to crack us out. Let's do it. Come on. Redemption time. Okay. Uh, I don't hate this hand. I'm going to keep it. First appearance of Fatal Push. I mean, it's a one-up in the sideboard. I don't know how often I think I'm supposed to see it, but it's nice that it's here. This is a good matchup for it. 
I'm just going to play Dothy Voidwalker here off of two swamps. They're fetching in response. Might as well at least keep their fetch land out of the void. They didn't plow. Herod Mesa. All right, now they have a plow all of a sudden. I imagine they drew that for turn because that was just a waste of mana otherwise. I can Turok next turn. I could Pain's Reward now. I do have more life than them, but not by a whole lot. And I would have to go to clean up unless I hit a Dark Ritual or unless I hit a Chrome Mox. Yeah, I'm just going to play my land and pass here. Hold up Fatal Push for a turn cycle and then hit them with Turok next. Mother of Runes is here. Found a target for Fatal Push. Let's clear her out. I hope they have some sort of trick. Fetching in response. They don't have a trick. They were just fetching in response. Okay. Uh, they were playing around Opposition Agent. That's what just happened. All right, Turok. Let's see them discard a Caracas. Random discard a Caracas right now. Recruiter and Mother. I'm not sad to see those go. And we got past the window where they could ping this with Orcish Bowmaster and kill it. And Caracas is an ugly answer to Turok, by the way. It stops the damage from coming in, but it's not pretty. They just tutored for a Cauldra. And I'm going to Pain's Reward. I'm going to bid one. Let's go. I will get weird with this. I know they have a haste creature in their hand, so I have to be a little careful. They're bidding eight. I'm bidding nine. Let's go. They have to stop at 14 because they're dead on board. The bid is 10. I'm going up to 11. And I get the cards, which I can cast Exsanguinator Cavalry here. I also drew a Baleful Mastery for the Cauldra Germ. If I play Cavalry, I'm at eight. They can smush me down to nine. I think this is worth doing. Cavalry's in. Get my four damage through. They can attack me to three off the Cauldra, but I have that will cost all their mana. Because they missed a land drop on several turns here. That was the most honest pains reward we've had yet. There were real decisions to make about life totals and stuff. They drew a freaking Caracas. Uh, here I am saying, if they miss their land drop, not only that, it's that land. Okay. I have Baleful Mastery, though, which can remove Cauldra. I go to three. It's not a big deal. I attack back. Edict also removes Cauldra. I've got options here. Attack with my creatures. Wow, they didn't bounce it. That's lucky. Why didn't they bounce it? Okay, Edict. Um, I can make them sack a creature token. I'm going to do that right now. While they can't flash in Bowmaster. I've learned about that trick. Concealing curtains. Do I want to go to three to reveal their curtains? Kind of. Show me your curtains. Uh, I guess I should have pre-combated that. That was an extra damage. Legion to Ashes. Exile target non-land permanent opponent controls and all tokens that player controls with the same name as that permanent. Okay. That I don't really care about. Battle of Bywater opponent is all over the place here. Destroy all creatures of power three or greater and make a food for each creature you control. Well, that one's going. Yep, for sure. Okay, well, that's where we are now. I'm glad I revealed their curtains. Bouncing Turok in the end step rather than in combat. Okay, that makes sense. So they got to protect their hand at the expense of four damage. Yeah, so they can exile my cavalry with Legion to Ashes. Bowmaster doesn't really matter here. There's a land. I know three other four cards still. And they know I can just refire their hand and get whatever they don't cast this turn out of here forever. All right, that's exiled. And Mother of Runes. Okay. Do I want to go to two? And I can make them Hellbent. If I go to two, what does that do? Like, I can use my blood this turn. I mean, I have to, I have to do this eventually. I am going to fetch, at least. And I don't think I'm winning a Pain's Reward fight anymore. I'm going to get rid of that. I love a Bowmaster. Let's go. Well, can't play that Thoughtseize. One, two, three, four. I, I think I have to just get their hand empty. I would love to play this Bowmaster, but I don't have the life points to do it. If I attack, I lose. So I better not attack. Yeah, two's not very much life. Okay, passing the turn. And hope they don't draw. Well, if they draw, most removal spells that they could draw would gain me life, which is okay. Bounced to rock. And if they want to be hyper aggro, they can pro black the stone forge, put me to one. 
and then plan to do the same thing next turn and just bet against any instant speed removal. Okay, they're taking it. I respect it. I'm going to one. I'm dead to a Bowmaster at any time. A card that they do play. I do get to Bowmaster their mother right now because it's tapped though. Clear that out. Now I have two blockers for one creature. And I'll attack with my Revealing Eye. Swords of Plowshares. Okay. That's some life points to work with. I'm just going to cast a Protection from White to rock. They have no hand. No reason to go after that. I'm no longer dead to literally anything that gets through. But they are stable. They can reach for Yorion and then flicker all their stuff next turn. But now I can cast Thoughtseize. I think I have enough mana. And I would rather cast Thoughtseize here than and stay at 2, then fetch and go to 1. Oh, I should have attacked with Tarak first. Now they don't care. Yeah, I missed 2 damage. Damn it. Okay, I'm going to attack with everything, because I can Plague Engineer on core. Second main, if they make a block. And I can Plague Engineer on human if they don't. Yeah, I could have attacked with Tarak first, put them to 6. They don't bounce with the Caracas because they're trying to protect Yorian. Plague Engineer on core. And I'm not going to fetch because that makes me dead to Bowmaster. I'm going to try not to be dead instantly to cards that I know are in their deck if I can avoid it. Okay, just a Plains. Cauldra doesn't do any tricks like Batterskull. Agadim's Awakening can get just Orcish Bowmaster right now. Is that enough? I think so. And I am doing it now pre-combat. That's extra damage because the Orc Army's bigger. And with them at 7 and in top deck mode, I'm just trying to get it done. They would need at least 8 mana to do anything with the Cauldra. We play a 1-drop equip attack. They only have 6. I think we're safe from that. Okay, that got a little dicey at the end. They had a bunch of weird tech cards. I still think my plan is my plan. Pain's Reward is a banger. Powder Keg is a generic way to clear a Mother of Runes once she gets in there. But I also have like Engineers in. Yeah, okay, let's go. Right back in. Gotta do it on the draw now. I'm gonna keep my hand. I have a bunch of stable mana. I'm not great against a Mother of Runes. Thoughtseize. Okay. Do you want my Dark Ritual, my Thoughtseize, or my Cavalry? Probably my Cavalry. It's the only actual thing I have going on here. Yep. Ooh, the curtains. Well, poke you back. What's going on? Batter Skull, Recruiter, and other Thoughtseize. I'm most worried about Recruiter here. That represents whatever they want it to, makes the Orion better. They did Thoughtseize right away. I was about to wonder, like, are they even going to Thoughtseize me again right away? Because they saw a removal spell and a ritual, neither of which they care about right at this moment. The Curtains is worth taking, though, because that takes Batter Skull. Oh, did they draw a 1-drop? Or they're just playing around Opposition Agent? Nope, actually drew a 1-drop. Yikes. To rock Dread Cantor. Well, that was a good one. Dark Ritual, Con Queso. Alright, the luck's starting to swing my way. But don't worry, they'll draw Caracas immediately. Your turn. The Dark Deal. Each player discards the cards in their hand. I could put both of us Hellbent and make Tarak a 5 power. I think if their card was good, they would have played it, though. Um is always Jitte. That's actually a good one. I have the Baleful Mastery to handle that. And I can play Curtains as well, because Mastery costs 2 in the, in the world I live in. Okay, here we go. Fetch land. Fetch. What's the play? Battle of the Bywater. Okay, this kills my Tarak, and they make a food. I mean, that's really good. Yep, sick one. And now I actually can't afford to flip my Concealing Curtains, because the Jitte will mess me up forever. Oh, that's, that's kind of exciting. It gives them a turn to play with Jitte, but... A 2-3 survives the Jitte activation, and if they tap the Mother, I can Baleful Mastery it. Yeah, this is actually interesting combat now. Come on! I thought he's one of those. You're playing 80 cards. You only got 4, even if you're playing 80 cards. I bet they're playing 6. I need a Judge. They got Thalia. That's interesting. I struggle to imagine why Thalia is good here. Well, I would definitely win the Pain's Reward. They can double block, and I get to kill something. I could flip Concealing Curtains, take the Thalia. Do I even care about Thalia? I don't think that I do. I guess First Strike with Jitte is pretty spooky. If I attack with Cavalry and they block Protect, 
I can Baleful Mastery the Mother. I think I'm just going to flip and bet that my Menace can get it done here. Do I care about Thalia? No. They can keep Thalia. I'm attacking. They can't kill any of my creatures. They have to double block and lose something, whatever they line up against here. Mother's going to protect herself. Then I eat the Recruiter, gain a life, opponent's a two. And my creatures have Menace, so even if they draw the land, play Thalia, and equip, they can't block if they use Mother to protect Thalia from Baleful Mastery. I think we're doing it, unless they have some other crazy tech card. Caracas, too late for that one. And the Menace will win the game here. Oh, this was wild. Who knew Death and Taxes would have been my nightmare matchup? All right, I'm going to exile the Mother of Runes. And I'm going to pay the Iron Price to do it. Oh, oh, I announced it already. Yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter. They're dead. Giving Thalia Pro Black all the protection in the world. And you can just watch my horse and weird eyeball gallop past. A 2-3 record. I think the deck does need another land. Or maybe some more card selection of some kind. I mean, the Exsanguinator Cavalry is actually insane. Agadim's Awakening, as Agadim's Awakening, was actually so good that I think I want more of those. The Dark Deal stuff was a little goofy. Maybe just uh, another Agadim over one of the Dark Deals. We did get to Dark Deal combo somebody in, in the league, and I'll count that as a big W. And Black is full of card selection if you're willing to pay life points to do it. Maybe Trinisphere is bad. I just got locked under it as often as I locked other people out of it, but I also just beat Storm, soloed them with the Trinisphere. Maybe that means it's a sideboard card. There's still room for a fourth thought, the Voidwalker, if I want kind of a more passive hate piece. At some point, if you start trimming the identity of the deck down, it just becomes Black Scam or Black Stompy, which is a different thing than the Pain's Reward deck. I, I think my next adventure would be looking for lifelink creatures, looking for card selection inside of the mono black shell that I am. Exsanguinator Cavalry does everything the deck wants to do. And I wish I could play eight of those. I would. But you can't. So uh, do a Scryfall dive if you want more feedback on that. But I think one dark deal, another Agadim's Awakening, that helps with the mana troubles and helps with the endgame troubles. All other things aside, we were very good at casting Pain's Reward. There was one time in one game that I blooded it away because I wasn't going to win the, the bet. But I think I cast this like four times in the league, and I won all of the bets, and three of them were uncontested. Opponent just never didn't even bid back. I just drew my cards for one life. And that's a pretty good spot. We we did successfully meet the challenge, which was build a deck that would want to cast Bane's Reward. Ryan, thank you for asking me to do this. Everybody, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, check out the Patreon, and I'll see you next time.